Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Nature Immersion. So I've been asked lately how I've come to know as much as I do about birds. And the answer is that I want to know. A lecture I listened to years ago, I don't remember who it was, but they had a phrase that really stuck with me, and it was intention, attention, retention. Basically, if you have the intention of learning, you have the desire, then you'll naturally pay more attention and therefore you'll have a better rate of retention of the knowledge. So you have the intention and you want to learn more about birds. So the first thing I suggest is getting a field guide and I got one that was specific to where I lived. I got all about Louisiana birds, kind of hard to see there, but after that I ended up with another birding book, Birds of Louisiana and Mississippi. I like them very much. They give a, a basic intro on what to look for, to pay attention to the geography of where you see birds and when you see birds. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and then I got the Sibley Field Guide to Birds of Eastern North America. So it's a more in-depth book, a more broader scope. And you can take this as far as you want. Um, here is the Warbler Guide, and this is a big fat book all about warblers. You can find a book specific on different sparrows, different hummingbirds, but you can find books that are specific to one bird, such as a book on purple martins or the ruby-throated hummingbird. So another resource that's really good in learning, so you have the intention and now you've purchased some books. Now it's time to pay attention to what you see. Um, there's a store in my town called Wild Birds, and it's a franchise, and as far as I know, they're all over the eastern United States. And big cities and smaller towns as well. And they're a great resource to go into and ask questions. They're happy to answer any question you have. And you might not have a Wild Birds Unlimited, but you might have some other birding store. The next thing you can do is try social media. Get on Facebook and the Wild Birds, they have Facebook pages for the different cities that they're in. But there's also many other groups for birders and maybe find a local birding society in your city or region and maybe they take field trips on the weekend and you can hop along and you know you learn from people that already know that's a really big help um, another thing that is important is a camera sometimes you'll go into a bird store and say I saw this bird and it was kinda small and gray well, is that all you saw? It's going to be very hard to determine what the bird was. And a picture can be worth a thousand words. So now we're paying attention to the birds in our area. And maybe you only know a few birds. Maybe you know a blue jay, a cardinal, and a mockingbird. And maybe that's all you're familiar with. Well, start looking at them. Even if it's a blue jay and you really only notice blue jays, well, just pay attention to the blue jay. Pay attention to the cardinal. Notice how they both have crests on the top of their head. Notice how they're also pretty big birds. And included with that is the northern uh, mockingbird. Those are the three birds that I probably see the most at my place, at my house. And I live in a house in a subdivision in a small city but there are a lot of trees around a lot of big native overstory trees oaks and pecans kind of dominate the landscape and that's important it's for your house to have a variety of different trees and native trees provide more food for birds because of the insect populations that they will support so Maybe you also see a bird that looks like a dove. But maybe you see two doves of relative size, but they have different markings. Or maybe you see a small looking dove. Well, 
That's where these field guides come in handy. You start identifying one bird that's around your house all the time that you've seen before but you didn't know what it was. And it so happened to be a white-winged dove. But now you've learned a new bird. And then you see that smaller dove and usually see it on the ground feeding. And when it flies off or when it flies to land, you notice that the under wing or the wing area looks brown. Well, now you have a common dove, common ground dove. And so there's another bird. Now, maybe it's a, it's a beautiful spring afternoon turning into evening. And you look up and you see a small bird and it's blue. It's a brilliant blue color. What could it be? Well, we grab our field guide and we see it's spring migration, middle of April, I guess we're at the end of April now, and you may have seen an indigo bunting. And if you can snap a picture, it's going to make it much more easy for you to identify it. Well now, summer's over and winter's here, and you start seeing these small little brown birds with white eye marks, eye lines, but it also has one on the crown going back. And when you get a pair of binoculars, which is also an important piece, you look, you can see that where the, the eye, the white eye is going back, that it's yellow right here. So you might have, and it's white, you see a white throat. And now you've seen a white-throated sparrow. Now you've seen these other birds, and they're close to the same size as the sparrow, but they look different. They're brown and kind of gray on their back, but right on the side of the breast under the wing, you see yellow. And on some of these birds, when you look up close with your binoculars, you see a yellow patch right on the top of the head, the crown. And sometimes you'll notice that they have a yellow spot on the base of their tail on their rump. And especially when they fly off, you'll see that yellow. Well now, you've seen a yellow rumped warbler. Look at all these birds you've learned in this one year. So when the next year comes back, you'll be looking for these certain birds and you'll notice them again and you'll cement it in your head. You'll have the retention. And so then when the next spring comes around, your eyes are wide open and you see the indigo bunting again. But now you see a much larger bird. It's black and white when you see it from the back. But when it turns around, it's got a red, big red breast. And it's white underneath on the belly. Well, now you've seen a rose-breasted grosbeak. And you've learned a new bird. And as the years progress, you just keep adding on. Just look to the skies. And what is that? You see a bird that black and it's just gliding. It's not really flapping its wings, it's just gliding on the air current. See that it looks black, but the wings, they come up and go out. So you might have a turkey vulture or a Karen crow as it's called. But you're looking at the sky again and you're seeing another bird and it's gliding and it's not really flapping its wings. You think it looks brown, not black. You look carefully, you'll see that its wings are just going straight out from the body. Some type of hawk. So over the years, you just learn more and more. Well, so at this point, you just want more birds around because you're just so into it, but you want to attract them. You've got some bird feeders up, but you think that you want to see the birds in there in a more natural environment, not just flocking to feeders, which is excellent, but you want something more. So then you purchase by Barbara Ellis attracting birds and butterflies how to plan and plant a backyard habitat excellent excellent book you can see it's thin but you can get your feet wet you really like it 
subject and you say, well, I bought this book on Amazon and it recommended Bird by Bird Gardening, the ultimate guide to bringing in your favorite birds year after year by Sally Roth. Highly recommend this book. And so now you're planting native trees, large overstory canopy trees, you're planting Catalpas in the understory, small trees. You're planting blueberries and red buckeyes for shrubs. You start planting hibiscus for perennials. You start seeding some daisies as annuals. You start planting coral honeysuckles and cypress vines and passion fruit for vines. And in a few years' time, you have a bird sanctuary. So that's how you learn a good step-by-step -step how to start and yeah, there you go so I hope this was useful if you like the video click the like button subscribe to my channel this is nature immersion